Um, our next uh, roaster is uh, um, a man of many talents, and most of you who own restaurants know him. Uh, he is a former restaurant uh, critic for the New York Times, and uh, he is the author of two best-selling books. That's correct, yes. Please welcome Frank Bruni. You will now read to us from the Book of Alan. Uh, you will now read to us. Right. Here, yeah. And he signed it at some point, I can't even remember. But, um, if you... No, there's no, well, no, I have a letter to read, but we're, we're, getting, we're getting ahead of things, Tom. Um, if, you're like me, you, uh, if, you're, if you're like me and you own a dog-eared copy of Alan's book, uh, Fork It Over, um, you know that there's a very, very interesting quote on the back cover, and I'm going to read it right now. Um, Please, please, more meals. If only we have wine like this, she gasped. I have sex stories. I'll tell you everyone in Hollywood I slept with. Please, more, I'll be a gourmet trap. That is from Sharon Stone, and one of, um, one of Alan's two often forgotten uh, masterpieces of magazine writing is about his, um, his evening with Sharon Stone. Um, many of you have forgotten about it, but Sharon Stone never did, and uh, um, she asked me to share this with you tonight. This is from Sharon. Alan, my love, my slowly roasting leg of lamb, I'd give anything to be with you right now, but I just had a pelvis lift in advance of the shoot for Basic Instinct 5. <laughs> in which my character stalks a Pensacola retirement community and is suspected in a string of Medicare fraud cases. So I, stand, so I send in my stead this letter. Imagine it with its blonde hair pulled back tight, a Kleenex of a dress riding dangerously high up its thighs. Like me when we met, when we dined. When I first understood what it meant to be ravenous, although I'd long known what it meant to be ravishing, and you instructed me in the ways of appetite, the hungry eye they once called your column. The hungry you indeed, piggy piggy man. <laughs> Always begging for more. Oh, the things you taught me, Alan. From you I learned that sous vide wasn't a sexual fetish. <laughs> that John George was really Guy Fieri with a less flamboyant colorist and an accent coach. <laughs> that if I had a choice between a night in Philly and a whole week in New Orleans, I should choose Philly, because Vetri was the real deal, while Creole was apocryphal. I had to have my assistant look up apocryphal for me, but that's okay. When it comes to words as to so much else, bigger really is better. And you always had big ones, my darling, my lamb burger. We spoke different languages. To you, the noun sliver meant a portion too small, to me, it meant yet another in the string of unwatchable movies I made. For you, undressed is a complaint about a salad. For me, it's a living. Casino puts you in mind of clams. Casino puts me in mind of the only decent part those Hollywood bastards ever gave me. But you fibbed. Of our dinner low those many years ago at the restaurant March, you wrote, I told her how nice she looked. She smiled but did not reciprocate. Alan. There are nonverbal ways to repay a compliment. <laughs> How soon men forget. You know, it's the same with all you gourmands, isn't it? When the truffles are in season and the burgundy flowing, you're all flattery and sweetness. Never lasts. For you, I was just a passing fancy, the morsel of the moment, like Carmelini's fried chicken, Batali's duck liver ravioli, Chang's buns. <laughs> the pork ones, I mean. I've sampled the others, too, but a lady doesn't momofuku and tell. <laughs> I wish the people in this room could see you as I do, a guide through the vast precincts of pleasure, an educator. In fact, you have students at the International Culinary Center and only a few have filed charges. <laughs> they loved that class trip you took them on to a restaurant that gave them practice in a vast vocabulary of derision. What memories they'll always have from Leal. <laughs> Oh, Alan, my cumin-scented cumin lamb tagine, I miss you. The ripple of your verbs, the heat of your adjectives, the sweat of your conjunctions, and, but, however, 
I imagine us together, in my mind's eye, I see a metal diner in Long Island City, Queens. And inside it, there's a couple who take a peculiar shine to you. They've come from Montreal, and we accompany, accompany them on a trip back there. And along the way, on the side of the road, we see a cluster of people cheering and clapping. Some buffoon named Bruni, some glutton named Dozerski, some Sybarite named Sifton. Their applause is genuine because they're wowed by your staying power, and they only know the half of it. And they hope someday to measure up. But Alan, I can tell the world, there's just no way. I'm not sure, but I think that's the first time anyone's ever used the phrase pelvic lift. <laughs> At a roast, not in this room. I'm sure, I'm sure it's been mentioned in this room, but 